St. Charles. It feels like my second home up here so much. <laughs> I'll tell you, there's not a county in the state more motivated than this county to make a difference, and I thank you for that. You know, this is an election that's different. This is an election that maybe we've seen one like it in our lifetimes, 1980. An election about very big things. This isn't about changing personnel. This isn't about what uh, letter a politician wears on his chest. It's about the nature of our country. And I'll tell you something. I'm going to talk a little bit today about how I think Republicans get it wrong in our talking points. Because I keep hearing that the economy is the issue in this campaign, and it is not. The economy is not the disease. The economy is the symptom. The disease is the loss of our freedom. That's what it is. And until we get the message right as Republicans, we're going to have an uphill slog, even as incompetent a job as the Democrats have done. Because, because this isn't really about who can better manage the mess. It's about what the nature of the country needs to be going forward. What kind of people will we be? Will we be the free people that have innovated and created more than any country on earth? Or will we become like Greece, like Spain? like Ireland. You know, it's fascinating to me that we won the Cold War, and now we are following meekly in the footsteps of the nations that fell. How ironic is it that we won the victory, but we might give it up? I hear a lot of politicians say this election cycle, I'm worried the next generation will be the first generation less prosperous than the one before it. I worry about that too, but I worry more that the next generation will be the first generation less free than the generation before it. Because if we've got the freedom, we can get the prosperity. It doesn't work the other way around. If you have any friends that doubt that, offer them to follow this following historical lesson. You know, we were thrown out of most of the respectable countries around the world when our nation was put together. We weren't the best and the brightest, and we didn't have the best assets at our fingertips. But within one generation of the establishment of the United States Constitution, the United States of America had the highest standard of living on Earth. One, free. And if we take our eyes off that prize and begin staring at minor side issues, we'll miss the point and we'll miss the importance of this moment in history. We are losing our freedom at the fastest rate we have ever seen. You know, it's Memorial Day weekend. I think it would be a crying shame if the freedom that was purchased for us in blood on the battlefield we're lost in a sea of red ink. If we allowed the freedom that people fought and died for to be strangled by red tape. We're not going to let that happen, are we? No. no. I heard one consultant say to me not long ago, you know, this election is about jobs, jobs, jobs. And I thought, you're only right if you mean eliminating the jobs of Barack Obama, Claire yeah. McCaskill, and Jane Nixon. <laughs> deserves it. <laughs> but I'll just say this, if you've got any friends and neighbors that uh, try to tell you Jay Nixon is different than Barack Obama, ask them the following question. Name one intrusion into our freedoms over the last three years that Jay Nixon has even said anything about. Not done something, that'd be asking far too much. <laughs> said something. And if you're not part of the solution these days, you're part of the problem. Yeah. Jay Nixon is just simply Barack Obama's Missouri accomplice. The Chicago Way has moved west to Jefferson City, and we have to unearth it. But we have to get our ducks in a row. And my friends, we don't need career politicians in the governor's office, but likewise, we don't need to adopt democratic talking points. We don't need slogans like jobs or jobs bills. There's no such thing, is there? Right. We've spent about $7 trillion, if you add the stimulus, and TARP, and the auto bailouts, and the machinations of the feds to create jobs. Where are the jobs? They're not there because government can't create them. Government has to get out of the way and let the private sector work. And that's the lessons politicians don't want to learn. And we don't need someone to better manage the mess. 
What we need is someone to lead the fight for freedom. I challenge you that when you go decide who your nominee for Republican governor is going to be, ask yourself the following question. Who would you like to see on a stage debating Jay Nixon? Who would you like to see standing up to the Democratic press and the media? Who would you like to see leading this state's fight for freedom? Because that's job one of the next governor. It's not managing the mess. It's not being a CEO. It's being a fighter for this state. My friends, we are facing a moment in time where we decide what government will be like. The federal government is trying to reduce the states to conquered provinces and us to mere serfs. We have to remind the politicians that we are the masters and they are the servants. And that's going to be a tough fight. You know, I've been